Hi, my name is Steve Cavallaris with electricaltime.com. In today's episode, we're going to be looking at something special, and that's this thing over here. This is a meter combination disconnect. And this is made by the Eaton Corporation. And I really like this unit. It's nice and compact and it's easy to work on. So Eaton, great job on your product here. So today we're going to be looking at the 2023 National Electrical Code. And we're going to be looking at section 230.85. It's called emergency disconnects. And also, just so you know, article 230 is called services. All right, so the purpose of this, uh, one of the reasons, actually, probably the most important reason, you know, when the firefighters would come to the dwelling unit and they want to turn the power off, you know, under the 2017 and prior editions of the National Electrical Code, you know, it was perfectly okay on a one family house just to have the regular meter and then, you know, without this extra you know, space down here, just a meter. And then from there, we would then have the service entrance conductors that would then go ahead and supply power to uh, a main breaker panel that, let's say, this house has a basement, and that would be in the basement. So, you know, the firefighters, you know, had a, a big problem. They'd go into these houses and maybe could be forced to remove the meter, which could be extremely dangerous, especially if it's under load not good at all but check this out now so now let's say the firefighters are going to this you know to a one family house not hopefully not to this one but let's say they're going to a one family dwelling and they have to cut the power off look how easy it is they find this little tab down here press it open up the door and then just turn off that main breaker pretty quick pretty easy all right, so we're going to go check out our code book now. And we are in the 2023 National Electrical Code. And we're going to be looking at 230.85, and that's called Emergency Disconnects. But before we get into the section that we're going to be looking in, let's take an overall view of 230.85, Emergency Disconnects. So it starts with General. Then we talk about location, and that's what we're going to come back to in about a minute. Then it talks about rating. It talks about grouping. It talks about disconnects. Talks about a replacement. Talks about identification of other isolation disconnects. Talks about marking. Marking text. And then it finalizes at marking, location, and size. So a lot of information here. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to focus on location. And it says here, the disconnecting means shall be installed in a readily accessible outdoor location on or within sight of the dwelling unit. All right, I'll repeat that. Location. The disconnecting means shall be installed in a readily accessible outdoor location on or within sight of the dwelling unit. All right, so we just took a look at our code book for 230.85 emergency disconnects. And we looked at 230.85A1, and that's called location. And basically what it says, you know, you got to put this in a readily accessible location. So what does that mean? Just like this, it's readily accessible. I don't have to climb over something. I don't have to climb under something. I don't have to use a portable ladder to get to it. I can get to it nice and easy. All right, that, that's a very simple description or definition of readily accessible. Also, it says in our definition for readily accessible, and we find this in article 100 under definitions, if we put a lock under here, right? Remember how easy it was for me to open up this door? I just went here, press this open, and I'm open, and I can shut that main breaker off for the entire house. So, all right, so feel free to put a lock here. It does not violate the rule of being readily accessible. 
And believe me, if the firefighters come to a house and there's a little lock down here, they're going to have no problem cutting off that lock. All right, so let's continue. And it says that it needs to be on an outdoor location, right? So looks like this is outdoors to me, so we're good so far. And it has to be on or within sight of the dwelling unit. So this one is installed on the dwelling unit and we're good. Now it also says within sight of the dwelling unit. And if we go back to definitions in article 100, within sight, what that means is that it can be within 50 feet, but you have to be able to see it. All right. I don't recommend it. I think if I'm going to be installing an emergency disconnect on any dwelling, any one family house at least, you know, and this is an overhead service, I'm going to put this right here on the house itself. Now, there could be different types of installations where you might have to put that emergency disconnect within sight of the house, which means it's not going to be on the house. And that might, that might be okay, but definitely check with your electrical inspector. And maybe you might have to check with your authority having jurisdiction. And we call those folks the AHJs out there. So hopefully you got something out of this quick video. Also, check this out. Uh, if you go to my website, electricaltime.com, and that's what it says here on the hat, electricaltime.com, I've got free code questions and answers. So go to electricaltime.com, click on the free NEC code questions and answers, and then by email, you'll get a free code question and answer uh, Monday through Friday. Also, for the electrical contractors out there, check out my buddy's website. It's the 360electrician.com. Again, it's the... 360electrician.com. His name is Jeff and he has courses that he sells. He does coaching. This is for the electrical contractor for your business. So I teach the National Electrical Code. That's what I do. I'm the code guy. But Jeff teaches you how to better operate your business. He's got forms that you can buy. He's got coaching to help you with your business because it's one thing to know the code, but it's another thing to know how to run your business. Again, go check out the360electrician.com. Thanks. I just want to offer a little bit of clarification on something that I said in the video. I mentioned service entrance conductors, and we need to understand what that means because it's easy to get confused in the National Electrical Code. So in the installation that we looked at, you know, it's an overhead service. And, you know, from the overhead, we've got our service entrance conductors that are starting at the demarcation point. We call that the service point. And then from there, uh, those conductors go into the weatherhead, and then they come down the mast, and then they come to the... Uh, top side of the meter socket enclosure. We call that the line side of the meter socket enclosure. And in this scenario, when we look at the load side of the meter socket enclosure, it's not service entrance conductors. Those um, conductors are now powering up that main breaker, um, you know, which is now the first point of disconnect. So in the 2017 and prior editions of the National Electrical Code, this type of installation most commonly would have not had a, uh, an emergency disconnect. It would have just had the, the, the meter socket. And then from there, we would have the conductors that would be supplying power to the main breaker panel, in this case, in the basement. And those conductors would have been called service entrance conductors. And why is that? Because really the service entrance conductors, you know, even though we got the meter in the middle, the meters are not considered service equipment, you know, under the definitions 
in the National Electrical Code. All right, so I'm just going to repeat myself. So if this installation was done in the 2017 and prior National Electrical Code, we'd have a service entrance conductors coming from overhead, down the mast, to the meter, and then from the meter, service entrance conductors going to the main panel, and that would be our first point of disconnect. But because we have a first point of disconnect outside that emergency disconnect, the conductors that would come after that first point of disconnect from after that 200 amp main breaker, they're not service entrance conductors anymore. Now they're called feeder conductors. And that's a really important distinction that you need to be aware about. Because let's say you're going to do um, an upgrade on a customer's home. And, you know, let's say the the main breaker panel, it's in decent shape. And you say, there's no reason for me to change it. But you look at the meter socket outside and uh, it's bad. It's got to be replaced. So you go ahead and now you're under the, the new code. Um, let's say as of 2020 or the 2023 NEC. And now you're, you know, you're going to be uh, installing that emergency disconnect. And you do so. Right. It wouldn't have to be what I showed you in the video. It could be, you know, a different kind of disconnect. But let's say you decided that you were going to do the same thing, because I happen to think that Eaton product, it's pretty cool. I like it. So at that point, after you install that uh, that meter combination disconnect and now you're going to be supplying power to that breaker panel that's in the basement. That breaker panel is no longer the first point of disconnect. That breaker panel now is a sub panel that's going to be powered up by a feeder, feeder conductors coming off of that emergency service disconnect. So make sure that you understand the important things there. Also, see my dog in the background, Sonny, and uh, he's got a magic word. Now watch what's going to happen when I say this word. Cookie. You want a cookie? Cookie. You want a cookie? Is that right? All right. There we go. So I guess I got to go now because I said the magic word to Sonny. I got to give him his cookie now. All right. So hopefully you like this video. And uh, again, we'll catch you on the next one. Thank you.